Welcome back, guys. Today, we're going to talk about probability and continuous random variables. Now, we've already talked about discrete random variables, but we're going to talk about continuous random variables today. I'll divide this box up here in half. The first important idea is the concept of standard deviation. Standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution. We can't start to talk about continuous before we talk about before we talk about discrete. In this case, our standard deviation is going to be equal to the summation of our value minus the expected value squared times its prevalence. <clears throat> Meaning, take what we have, subtract the, the expected value to find out is it above or below, square that to make it a distance, and then multiply it by how often that happens or the weight, the amount of times that happens, the probability of that happening. And when we do that, we end up with a big, huge number that we then take the square root of to find the average amount that something varies from the mean or the average amount that something varies from the expected value, okay? And so if we would have left that squared, it would be our variance, our total variance from the mean of all of our values considered together. We use that as a jumping off point to talk about a probability for continuous random variables. So when we talk about the probability of continuous random, random variables, we're going back to a time earlier this year, earlier in this course, where we found the area under a curve. Could happen one of two ways. Either we have a uniform where up the side here, we have one over K, which is um, our distance between our start and our end point. And then the area under here is equal to one. And so we're going to be doing an evaluation of length and width, or it could be normal. In which case we'll be doing what we did earlier this year, right? Where we had normal and we had our mean and our standard deviation. And we would use our z-score. Our z-score was equal to our x minus our mean over our standard deviation. And we use our table A or our normal, normal CDF, right? Our function on our calculator. Let's do a couple of examples. And I think you're going to find that you're, you remember back to what we've done before uh, using specifically that table A and our normal CDF. Here's the prompt. Among those who play Minecraft, the amount of time they spend playing per day is approximately normally distributed. This is good. We can draw that picture with a mean of 150 minutes and a standard deviation of 42.7 minutes. <clears throat> Since we chose Minecraft player at random, let y equal the amount of time they spend playing Minecraft in minutes. So what type of variable is y, discrete or continuous? So think about this. Y is the amount of time. Time is going to be a continuous variable because any value... from zero to 1,440 minutes, which is 24 hours. Can be spent playing Minecraft. There's a continuum here, right? So 42.7 minutes, 42.38 minutes. So there's not a discernible number of things a discernible, a discernible number of answers there, right? There's always answers that could be between those. And so when we interpret the standard deviation, remember the standard deviation was 42.7 minutes and our mean was 150 minutes. What does standard deviation mean? So the amount of time spent playing Minecraft each day. This is all context, guys. You got to have that context. Typically varies 
from the mean of 150 minutes by 42.7 minutes. Okay, so it typically varies from the mean of 150 minutes by 42.7 minutes. So the typical variation, that's a standard definition of standard deviation. So find and interpret the probability that y is less than or equal to 90. So that would be um, the probability that someone, that a player plays less than 90 minutes. So if we're actually going to find this probability, this is going to involve us drawing our normal curve like we've done before. And we know this is a normal curve because it told us up here. And our mean is 150. Our standard deviation is 42.7. And so in the middle here, this should be looking very familiar. In the middle here is 150. And so our value that we want is down here, right? And we want it to be less than that, so it's this part over here. Why draw the picture? Remember, this is helping us remember exactly what area we're finding, and that's going to help us when we use our table A or our normal CDF. So this is the area that we're finding. Let's use the z-score method. So if we use our z-score method, our z is equal to x minus mu over standard deviation. Remember, got to have that formula to get full credit. So then I would do uh, 90 minus 150 over 42.7, and that's going to give us a negative 1.41. How did I get a negative answer? Well, negative on top, and it makes sense because it's below, so I got to have the explicit, so here's my explicit formula. I have to have the explicit formula with values put in, so I get full credit there. I have to have my z-score, and then I have to say that I'm going to table A, and remember, when you go to table A, you find that z-score on there, and the table AZ score that it gives me is 0 0.0793, and that would be a 7.93% chance. So when I interpret this value, what I'm going to say is there is a 0 0.0793 chance that a Minecraft... Player plays less than or equal to 90 minutes per day. Okay, there's a 7% chance they play less than 90 minutes per day. Okay. Part D. Find the probability that 45 is less than Y is less than 90. Interpret this value. Well, <clears throat> again, let's draw a picture here. Because it's normally distributed and it has a mean of 150 and a standard deviation of 42.7, here is my mean. Here is my 90. Here's that 45. And now remember, my green area, which was my area under 90, so the green, uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to 90 was equal to 0 0.0793. And so what I really need to do is I need to just subtract. I need to subtract. Let me get red here. I really need to take the green area and subtract the red area here. Well, the red area is the probability that x is less than or equal to 45. So if I take my full green area and I subtract the red area here, that's going to be that's going to leave me the blue, which is what I want. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the z of 45 here, which is uh, x minus uh, mean over standard deviation, explicit formula. Uh, z of 45 is equal to 45 minus 150 over 42.7, explicit formula with values put in. So my z-score of 45 is equal to negative 2.46, which from table A is 0 0.0069. So my final answer is my green area from up above, which is 0 0.0793 minus my red area which is 0 
which is equal to 0 0.0724. So there is 0 0.0724 chance that a Minecraft player plays between 45 and 90 minutes per day. Okay. So the trickiest part of that one, I think, is knowing that you just need to subtract from your original answer just that piece below 45. So that's the basics of a continuous random variable looking backwards to when we did this with our normal curves and using our table A. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.